front of your face. And so there's going to be some things that we're going to think about today during the show. And I believe personally it's going to have a massive impact on uh, people being able to assess where the balance is inside of them, not just trying to be right all the time. Because <laughs> obviously, the, you know, that right <laughs> indicates a certain direction. And this is just, you know, it's going to keep going on and on if we don't really see uh, the difference between, in a certain sense, the esoteric knowledge versus the exoteric. And I don't know a lot of people put that in the beginning of their books and their writings and, 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 um, and videos and stuff. But it's a serious yeah. thing because if you have someone else interpreting what something is supposed to mean that has a, maybe an astrological dynamic or something like that, it's more or less they're syndicating or, you know, utilizing it to their advantage. And, and they can spin the story and twist it. And then what will happen is there's somewhat of a hijacking of the symbol. So if you think the symbol or the, the sign or the you know, the name or whatever means certain things, we need to start getting some type of factual system of analyzing what is truth. And so that's really all what's mm -hmm. going on at the resistance. It's just getting the information in there that we know is the cream of this knowledge. We're all serious. We really want to expand. We don't want to waste time. And, and that's what you got. So like I said, tonight, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Hopefully there can be some questions thrown out there that get answered. And we just, you know, we'll go with it. Woo! Woo! I heard that. <laughs> oh man! I hope a lot of listeners got what he was saying. Cause <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man! And then, and then I know there'll be a lot of other people coming in. It's, if you if you gotta if you gotta take it as sci-fi, then just go ahead. You know, maybe it'd be a Stargate episode for you, and you know, it'll be like watching that new movie Jupiter Ascending or all this new stuff they keep coming out with. But this one, this <laughs> one happens to feature you. This is about you. <laughs> we're in this world where we're actually um, <laughs> acting out a part here. You know, because there's this big third person thing a lot of people do now, and it's just like, oh yeah, well this is what they're doing. Here's what the Illuminati are doing. Here's what blah 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 is doing. And knowledge from that level never taught anybody. <laughs> teacher, the real teacher is experience. Like you can find oh, out yeah. all of what, you know, somebody's, oh, and then the great light shine. And then once we got to Orion and then the ship and it came and, you know, they can go in and go in on you with that. But realistically, until you actually have that experience, it only has a certain value, especially when you leave the body. <laughs> you know, when we get to the serious yep. part of what's going on in our reality, you will be exiting the body at a certain point. There is not one being on the planetary system that is willing to step forth and agree that they have been able to escape it. <laughs> Meaning, at some point, we'll have to be outside the body and dealing with the atmosphere that's there. So it's important for us to kind of gauge what that's going to be like and already start dealing with it now. And this is what we call realm dynamics. It's about an investment on the plane that you're going to. Because you know how all the time they tell you, like, I mean, enough of us are old enough. If, if you're even 10 years old, they tell you, buy some gold, buy some gold, buy some gold. And it's just going to be worth a lot. Mm -hmm. Now you look at gold, it's worth a lot. <laughs> but then each day, though, you don't buy, it still keeps going up. So in 20 years, maybe your kids are looking at you and like, man, why didn't you buy gold? But realistically, all that stuff, realistically, you can't take it with you unless you eat it. But the reality is, is that there's another level to this. There's things that you can take with you into your next experience. And that's when you get into the evolution of your spirit and also the merging with the force known as the soul where there's no individualization. And so, and that, that's what we're going into. So today, you know, I, I did kind of even title the conversation today. I, I called it Vast Face the birth of a macro, but I guess it probably will take to the end of this year for people to be like, oh, that's why they were talking about vast face in the beginning of the year, the limitless or the thing that has no marks and is not defined because that'll be something this year that that'll this, this planetary system will start dealing with, beings on this planetary system will start dealing with for the first time and you will see the phenomena associated with that. I mean, if you were in the right places last year and looking at things the correct way, you could have seen it then. But this year, it's just going to be more vivid as it continues to get stronger and stronger. So I'm just going to let, because y'all obviously are the host, I'm the guest. You just tell me what you want me to do and, uh, and we can get right into it. Like I'm, I'm in, I'm in, the, I'm in the, uh, the seat and we on the ship together okay. and we can just take this thing off to whatever you want to know. Okay. I got one thing to say real quick that comes up right now. Can you explain how this 
how sensitive we we are, how sensitive we are to our environment. Because that's what I think a lot of people, we I know for me, I just didn't understand how sensitive each thought was, how sensitive each movement was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, this is because we're like, we have portals. We have our eyes, our ears, our mouth. And these are all orifices that all this information, all this smell, because even some of the DDs correspond to just smell. I was reading about this the other day. But there's sight, hearing, taste, smell, touch. So all this stuff is coming at you and it's basically trying to board your ship. And so a lot of this stuff is carrying infections. Like I was thinking about the other day that doing this short skit cartoon that was going to explain to teenage yeah. girls about allowing men to board them and then they, or even men or, or, or vice versa. And then they're becoming a virus spread, but really a predator. And then it starts tearing up your frequency. And this could not just happen on a, on a, a STD type level. It can happen on a spiritual level. And, you know, the biggest massive thing that I'm really trying to bring here to everyone is let them know, look, you catch cancer on the spiritual plane before you catch it on the, the physical plane. So if you want to defeat mm. such things, you need to either prevent them from happening or go to the control point of where it's actually taking place. Cancer is a dead cell. I mean, the word etymologically basically stems back to a certain type of, of snake, not to be confused with some of the other reptilian life forms, but the re reality is, is that you get an energy that is dead or it, it's like lead. You know, these words even rhyme. Obviously, we're big into the etymology, but this is the Saturnalian principle where no matter what element you really are, if you're, you know, unobtainium, osmium, whatever, all these different makeups of elements that are inside of us, the destination, if you don't make it above the speed of light, meaning you don't discover compassion, you don't discover the full meaning to your existence, is this lead state of consciousness where you basically become deadened to what else everyone else is experiencing and all the love and also nature. Because it's one thing with everyone else, but when you walk outside and you walk into, let's say you go to another city state if you're staying in a city, but you go into nature, can you still feel anything? <laughs> or does it feel like, all right, that tree looks like that tree, and I'm ready to get back home because I definitely got to get to this. And you know, it's not an attraction to nature because the reality is that tree, the tree that you're looking at is not like the other tree next to it if you looked at it on a molecular level. So especially as chemites, mm -hmm. we, we have a whole nother thing that we delve into with nature and how we have explored uh, the vastness of nature, <laughs> but it was through synthesis which is a term that is given for extraction of spagyrics, mean, meaning the taking a herb into its state of having no toxins. So like I'm saying, so it's a, it's a massive thing opening up here because I'm talking about something that has already been experienced. I'm not coming here bringing fanciful new age tales. So you can only imagine when people start burning out, which they already are, of what's going on in the world with the puppets, and then realize that they're the main character in this. In fact, they're not characters at all. Everything around them may be a character, but when they become true, they become the real being. And then that's going to be the thing to do. And that's why you'll see the transformation be quantum. Like they say, well, how, when does this change happen? It's been happening slowly. It's like 9-11, uh, Snowden, all these different things, Occupy. These are like the, the, beginning, of the uh, beginning of the birth pains, as they call it. And then it starts to get quantum because the technology that we're using. Because there is a simple mm -hmm. thing that you can actually look at. When you go back in the day, you see the first thing that was inserted into this planetary system to get it on its way is agriculture. And through agriculture, smelting was later on learned. And then through smelting, archery started. And then it keeps going on. There's actually a chart that I have that shows that there's certain things, everything is developed based on something else. Other than that, it doesn't ever get developed. So then when you get certain components, like a hedron collider, into the actual mix, that guarantees you to go into energy weapons, which is the next stage. And then the realization of the age of ether which is after this age of, uh, of silicone and, uh, excuse me, it's uh, more of the space age, as they call it, when we went into space. So we have to know what comes next because from the chart, there's something that comes next. So if we're sitting back here thinking that, you know, we can stay stuck in this certain re reality, right, because it could be our choice, <laughs> change is, in a sense, not a choice. 
Change is going to have you're changing now. Cells are dying. <laughs> All sorts of stuff is going on. Big <laughs> change is taking place. Right. So it's really more of what are you going to change into? Maybe that being more under your control, but not so much as the change itself. It's almost like when someone says you got to you got to go. some, you got to get out of here. You got to go somewhere. Right. So this is that same kind of thing. We, we either expand or we change into the extraction, meaning yet another uh, divided, weakened version of the totality of who we are. So it's a serious thing. Obviously, like I said, we could talk about it. But what we've done now is we've developed we've went at least with the network, we've been able to, again, go into this knowledge and figure out, okay, well, what's really important? So obviously we had to hit the physical and get with the body because that seems to block all thoughts and ideas. If you're trying to do some expansion, it's kind of like the shell or crab itself holding you down. The body obviously is based on phi. And we started discovering massive things like the body being a map to the immediate, and notice I said the immediate universe, the projected universe of what we believe is out there, and that you could use it to, in a certain tense, find real truth. And as they say, uh, as above, so below, that you should be able to find some kind of correspondence within your body to what someone is proclaiming to be the truth. <laughs> or you can just discard it because there was no truth that wasn't built like what's called a wheel or like the body. And that's why the grand grandparents say, yeah, you don't want to reinvent, you can't reinvent the wheel. This means that if you design things based on how the body's designed, that means you would first have to know how the body's designed. But if you design things based on that, then they will endure like the wheel. And obviously, the ultimate wheel is the zodiac. So when we find ourselves mm -hmm. on a dimension, right, strapped to the zodiac, like stuck in the spokes of a wheel, basically, right, like going around and around and around dizzy rather than riding it like a chariot then that's when troubles ensue. And so I, I want to chime in on, on that term, the chariot, because I come across on data just recently is about concepts called the chariot and uh, concepts about what's called vast face and small face. And these are all new, new words to many people, but I'll make it simple. Small face is basically your projected identity into this world, the limitation of what you've defined yourself on a physical plane. That's small face, small time, small ideas. Vast face is when you don't have any titles, tags, uh, marks, or whatever, and somehow you found a way to hang out in between small face and what would otherwise be the, what they call the subjective plane, which is basically uh, uh, nothing. It's not conscious. And so mm -hmm. to get people to actually understand this non-consciousness, I'll go into something that you have going on on the planet right now, which is what is inside of this planet what is directly in the center of the planet. And there's a lot of mysteries and a lot of hocus pocus and myths and boogeyman stories and whatever, ascended masters and Yeti and all that running around, but it's very simple. Inside <laughs> of the center of the, the planet is a star. And we are harnessing that star. We are harnessing the energy potential of that star. That star is in a tense what is keeping this planet warm. That's why they tell you this. The sun that you're looking at out there is actually not hot. It's the way that it's reflecting off of this particular atmosphere that is making it feel like it's hot in here because the heat is coming from the center as it always does, right? Like your heart is in the center, so the heat comes from there. So I realize mm -hmm. that, you know, this kind of story, a person may say, well, you know, you're going to have to give me a lot, even though they know there's a molten core in the center of the planet. You're going to give me a lot to believe that there's a star in the center of the planet that we're harnessing. Well, I can cross it over to another level and show you that there is a soul, i.e. a star, a sun, inside of your body or physical shell, physical crust, as, you, as we would call it to match it over to the other system, that is harnessing this potential of the soul inside of it. Meaning the body is the one that's dividing. It's phi. It can infinitely divide things into some kind of meeting. Soul is not trying to be divided. It's not trying to identify. It doesn't have what we call consciousness, so it's reached super sentience, the ability to be everything. So, again, mm -hmm. we're going we're gonna, to uh, desist for a minute here because I, I know there's, there's some veteran listeners on the line, and then there's some other people that just kind of tuned in because this was their resolution. <laughs> I would listen to more <laughs> like intelligent stuff. But, <laughs> and then, you know, we're going to we're going to, you know, put the brakes on it for a minute and then let's get some like some questions out there and then see where that takes us. You know, I, I know there are probably some people that called in and 
Yeah, man, I, I don't know how exactly how much time that we have on the conversation today, but the main thing that I want to convey to everyone more than anything is that this one right here, we got this. Meaning that together, it's not as insurmountable Ooh. as you think. And in fact, mm -hmm. when some of us have taken a venture just outside of the just outside of Alice's Wonderland, meaning outside of all of the projected reality TV rappers, the whole nine, just come out to this jungle and peek the head in. But from a uh, from a awake state of consciousness, because sometimes again, you get out in the jungle if you don't feel it, you, you're not gonna know what's there. But we're here telling you that there are elements inside of most of these plants that restore the entire system to a level that we've never even seen before and then right now there's the opportunity for you to enjoy in that for whatever reason i don't want to get it if anything the only thing that they're able to accomplish with the tons of propaganda about all of these different things is just to scare you so stiff so that you stay in your house stay in your shell stay in your bubble don't venture out into the vast uh, uh sea and get that knowledge or the feeling, excuse me, not so much as the knowledge, but the actually feeling that is accompanied with your connection that you supposedly have. Because the reality also is because if you, you accept the, the, the full concept that all is self, then that means you do have allies. That means you do have beings that are willing to assist you. But guess what? There are enough physical ones for you to, to respond with and to call on then what you would need to gander, especially without a third eye, about what the invisible ones may be able to do for you. <laughs> and so this is what I call crawling before walking. Many people need to go to the individuals adjacent to them that have the knowledge. This is the Google. Now you go to the Google, you see all your pineal gland, you type that as your keyword, you get enough. So <laughs> that's almost like te that's teacher without the personality, <laughs> in a sense, or the emotional mm -hmm. baggage in most cases, or the spiritual attachments, or the motive. Because many individuals, they move with motive. They move and do things because they have a particular objective. This is no different than getting that money, meaning that there's something that you need to go and get because there's other things that need to be taken care of. What I'm introducing people to is that there's a reverse in this equation that actually works a lot better. It's, it's where you're attracting, and we're not calling the law of, law of attraction, we're saying, look, you have an electrical side and a magnetic side. This is either what you would call in the ancient tradition, the bird or the serpent. One that is hissing and spitting. That is the, uh, that's how electricity moves. That's the electricity. And then, or, or, or excuse me, the serpent. And then you have the magnetic force, which is light and gentle. And it tends to the bird even. So it's about understanding that, hey, again, I'm talking about you. <laughs> If you're in the shower, stand in the corner and look at the corner and say, I'm me here. Because sometimes we, if you notice where the mind is, the mind is constantly moving all day. It's thinking about this, thinking about that, thinking about this. And many of these thoughts, about 80 to 90 percent of them, are against the person's will. Notice the, the word that's being used, W-I-L-L, W-H-E-E-L. This means if someone fills your mind with all of this uh, propaganda, illusionary things, and then... That is something that you're putting inside of your, your consciousness. It's not going to get you to the level that you really want to go, i.e. your will. So this means you're constantly having thoughts against your will. This constantly manifests an environment that is against your will. This is the secret to why at times we can't get out of the, uh, the vortex, whether that be downtown hanging out or whether that be in the club or the cave. All these kind of grottos that in a time need mixing up. They need you to go out, get another essence, and then on your circuit back, bring that new essence, brings that seed. See, because that's what we're talking about. We're not mm -hmm. talking about staying in one particular chakra, but we're also not talking about avoiding any of the chakras either. So that also means we're not talking about staying in a particular uh, uh, state of mind, i.e. Saturnalian, Venusian, Martian, Mercurian, whatever. We're talking about getting all of the rings in a tense, meaning having the full belt of this constellation. That is what's in front of you. It is graduation time in a tense. You went to a university called Earth. And once you complete <laughs> it, you get a ring, okay? This ring is a cable or a cabal. It signifies that you went a circuit, meaning a lifetime, one circuit. 
And that's also synonymous mm. with why they, they, they see metaphorically us as trees. Because trees grow the same way. As they grow it, of what you would see as a shell, thicker and thicker and thicker, it also develops another ring after another ring after another ring. Of course, this is how we tell the age on a tree. But if you go deeper, the trees are synonymous with wisdom. Wisdom is always synonymous with language because you generally need to write down wisdom in order to translate it to someone else now in this current world that we're living in. The, the writings are always on paper. Paper and trees have always been together in the bed since day one. You make paper out of trees. And you see, so there's all this stuff. It turns in, into itself continuously, right? So when you're watching this outside of it then, which is sometimes called the Arab body. It means you pull outside yourself and you look at the entire world. You see that it's a chariot within a chariot within a chariot. You got different beings riding on the universe while you got some beings riding on the earth. While you got some beings riding on top of humans. You got humans riding on top of other humans. This means when somebody's ragging you, riding on you, i.e. or even spirits, the monkey on the back as they call it, or the ancestor on the back. So there's deep terminology that shows you, look, this is going to be collective regardless of if we screw it up as immortals or not. We're still going to be riding each other's back because that is the string of DNA. So I want to give people a glimpse very briefly because I've been contemplating the unbegotten. A, a, a glimpse very briefly of what you are when you are non-identified. If you look at the DNA string you'll see that it is a spiral. This spiral is what we can call a torus or the torque. And I want to get people to understand the, this tool, the torque wrench. Because the torque wrench is, you'll see it at the place where they replace tires, it's what they use to tighten the lugs down. It's got a long handle so that you can get a great deal of leverage on this screw so you can torque it down. And the reason why you want to do this is because when you torque something down, it compresses the power and the energy of it into a smaller space. So then when this occurs, when the energy is released, it bursts. So if you catch a vision, again, of yourself in the beginning, you are torqued down energy, like a spiral, but not even visible. It's like electron microscope level. So then the only thing left for you is to attract and then ignite. Now, if you want to look at this just on the standard unity that goes on in this planet, when a man goes into a woman, he explodes and ignites, a.k.a. the Big Bang. As in the Talmud, when you read it back, it says in the beginning there was an explosion. That's really what it says. And so it's telling you in the beginning, a seed was pushed into the, in the environment and th so this is more of the of how you have to cross over what is actually going on here. And you follow that story. You follow the story of your ancestors. You know how they say, well, they write all this stuff down. It's supposed to be about our ancestors. And this is the story. The story about our ancestors is life, not necessarily all the details taking place on 3D. It's about existence in itself. It's a story that you're living right now. So imagine if you're going to try to become something that you already are. This is what I was saying about when the hand is in front of your face. If you have soul, you have, why are you looking for spirituality? <laughs> you see what I mean? So this is where we stop playing the game and this merges the planes. This collapses the spiritual plane on top of the physical. No longer are they divided. Look at the signs of division. The division symbol, a dot, a straight line, a dot. These, that dot is the symbolic of something that is whole, a wheel. What's in the middle is a straight line, something blocking them or veiling them. And then there's one on the other side. This is called the separation. Now let's look again at another symbol called percentage. It's the same thing. It is a circle, a straight line, and a circle because percentage is to denote how to separate something, right? So then when you want to figure out, well, what number is really attached to division then? Look down at your keyboard right now and tell me what number is on the percentage. Five. Okay. Five is phi. It means division. Phi is also the symbol of the pentagram. It's five senses. It means that we use only five categories to divide everything that we have, everything that we receive in this experience on 3D. So when you gain more senses as they're trying to make you believe, then you can perceive more things on this reality. But that's not exactly what happens. 
What happens, especially for those who've tried that, they get lost in all this trying to gain more, trying to gain more, an ever-ending treadmill. What it is is the senses collapse. The emotions collapse, meaning that you hear, see next. I've explained this before. Then that collapses. This is where all of these perceived consciousnesses that we keep developing across these worlds go into each other like Russian dolls. And then all of the energy that is spent in these divided characters that you keep allowing to die on these different planes because you want to do a game over and start over again, not fessing up to immortality, all of those are collected, all those shells. Okay, this is what, oh, if you understand what's really going on here on the spiritual plane, there are entities that hoard and attempt to try to keep these shells. The shell is when you spend your whole life doing anything, when it's over, you leave this husk. That's why the bone is so important. Like if you see in the, the rituals and the bones been and all this, what are they playing with the bone? It's because the bones are the shell. <laughs> Duh, it's even made of the same calcite material. It's the shell that we're leaving, and then that shell is then fed on, if it is not able to emancipate itself, it is going to be fed on anyway. The thing is, is that if it gets fed on and it transmutes things, meaning that if you're, when you die, your body is <laughs> in your crystal body, like they say about those crystal skulls, you, you die, you didn't gone into such a high frequency, the bo your body just crystallizes. So the only energies that will feed off of you, quote unquote, as we all are sharing a communion with each other, of those of that frequency. How can you prove this another way? This is because can you really get a person that's really dank and really, really out of control to be a vegetarian? No, they don't like the food. <laughs> their, their diet matches their behavior. So... In a tense, we have to look deeper at this symbolism, even Ouroboros. It tells us, you know, we all are basically feeding on each other. You are what you eat. You put it in your mouth, it comes out the other side, something else eats it, and then it becomes something, then it may end up coming completely around to become something that you eat again. They call that an ecosystem, <laughs> right? Yeah. So why were characters in this and observing it? Time is created, this thing that actually there's no such thing of. And then that's what creates, that's why time is related to Saturn, Saturn is related to lead. It creates what we perceive as death. Oh my goodness, every year is going by, now we've got time on it. Now we're observing the moon and observing the sun to tell us what day is gonna be next. Like any of these days are different. This is what we really need to see. The, the division that you see in the sky is the stars that are separate. But is it not when you truly look into something that's gathered, it's like a, it's clear. It's basically, and, and, and this is the last part of the secret. When you're looking at the sun, you are not looking at a ball in the sky as they're teaching you. You're looking at a hole, a hole. So what it looks like on the other side, outside of this matrix, my friends, is pure bright light full spectrum light. It, it, there's no separation there. All of the energies that are there are so close together, it doesn't appear like they're separate. So thus it becomes pure energy, unlimited potential. And then for us, it mm. becomes our sun, something that can heat us and give us energy. Some, because look, it, uh, make it simple. When you hold somebody, you get warmer, right? So this, what the sun is, is a, 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 all of the beings that are still in the perfected state of consciousness of being souls are all together. Thus, they're giving off what feels like warmth. You see what I mean? So this is, this is the deep stuff. You see what I mean? The reason why, of course, it feels like warmth is because we don't have a relationship with the sun beside it doing things for us. Meaning that uh, it's raising every morning, so it's allowing us to see things, it's allowing our plants to grow, but most people go really throughout the day and don't say anything about or, the sun and what it's doing and how splendid it is, right? Because after all, that's called sun worship. But we could talk about Lady Gaga, though. <laughs> it's okay to spend about an hour talking about Jay-Z, but when we talk about the sun, then it's sun worship, and that's going back to the old pagan tradition. You see, so this is what I'm talking about. Like, this kind of buffoonery <laughs> is out of the door. Mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. may just start here. I personally believe that I'm in a world that I can change because this is not like the world that I was in before. People there were, <laughs> they didn't access it somehow. Even the, ac even the elders didn't. What I'm telling you is five mm -hmm. years ago, I was in this world where even the elders weren't bringing this kind of knowledge. 
So mm. it forced me in a certain tense to create a world in which I could bring the knowledge. That's kind of how I see it, oh, because yeah. that's the only way I can yeah. deal with such a spectacle. Meaning that this yeah. is kind of weird to me that if this stuff is written, you just got to spend your time reading through this stuff and sifting through this stuff. You can't give up. You can OCR it, throw it in a reader, let, it re let the computer read it back to you. They'll tell you you're a droid. You're listening to defunct stuff. In fact, the most that anyone's ever given most of the time on the spiritual path is just ways to get off of it. They're like, oh, you shouldn't do that. Every time you open a book, it's like, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be around this. Shoot, by the time you're done, you might as well just sit in the closet. You're, they boxed you in just now with, you can't read this. You can't, you see what I mean? But at the same time, I'm not saying go out and do everything. I'm saying use your moral bearing, your moral compass. That is your rudder to guide you through this, this, uh, this abyss or this sea that we are in. And then again, the more that we gather together, because the abyss is very difficult to map. Obviously, because it doesn't have any what we would call physical points unless we create them. So we span across this consciousness like a web. Again, that is the DNA. The web in itself is torqued down, meaning it has unlimited potential. I'm telling you, you're so intelligent, it will blow this world away with what you really have to bring here. One world wouldn't be enough. So this means you're torqued down potential. The language is the same thing. It has all, it can do wonderful things. If a person knew how to put the letters together in the right combination, oh my goodness. That, I think that's what they used to call Kabbalah. If you could put the tones and vibrations in the right order with the proper <laughs> harmonics, then you can open up portals and everything. So what we're saying is, but it, you can even know that language now. Like they got Hebrews running around, they got Arabs running around. You can even know those languages and not be able to do that now because yeah. there's a key. And that's what I'm saying here today is that we are that key. We, all this stuff is basically mm -hmm. inanimate. It doesn't really have any use unless we understand or understand, as I call it, how to weld it. And so, again, mm -hmm. I'm just a, a, another individual bringing the message in a way in which I feel is, is, is coming true for from not just my heart, but from all my chakras. And as I said before, mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a real thing. I know that we really have a, a, a really good push at also educating our children because in a certain tense, all of this stuff is really in vain and something that we would have to do over again if we don't go right to the source. And, and some people say, I had a friend that we were talking about, you know, some people have a recollection that they've been trying to accomplish something life after life, but it just keeps not getting accomplished. I can solve that for you. The reason why it doesn't get accomplished is because we are not starting with the children. Then this becomes like Hugo. I'm just repairing this toy boy. It basically, in order to, uh, for another one to come and I have to repair that one, didn't repair that one, repair that one. Each time they get 30, 35, 45 years old, still acting like a boy, right? So mm -hmm. why not go mm -hmm. to the boy <laughs> and the 15, 10, go in there and start working on this and then use another language. You know, sound is shape is color. Grab the cymatics from the cymatic tray. Just bring that to the kids when they're younger. Flash those lights as being the lights that they like to see and change the symbol. Teach them another language. This stuff is simple. I'm not introducing nothing that's going to take us to grab the Mutium Q space modulator and re wrestle it out of the hand of Inky, smack a couple of Giggy across the face, then get to Venus and go all the way deep with the reptiles in order to gain the wisdom and blow everything up with a crystal. I'm not, <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> that's when you're going in the wrong direction. It, it makes it seem like that. It makes it seem insurmountable because you're going by yourself. It's a very simple thing. If you don't incorporate everyone around you some way or another and bring the strength together, it's just like you trying to move a couch yourself. Even if you're strong enough, it's a little awkward. <laughs> you're just moving this huge couch. Everybody like, man, you don't got nobody, nobody to help just, you? <laughs> somebody, just sent me a, somebody just sent me a text message asking, where do we, when, when we leave this body, where do we actually go? Let me explain like to you, because I, 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 got a, I got a really, turn, really... Where do we really go? Let me give you an excellent explanation of like, exactly how it works. When you come out of the body, right, you come out, and now because you're another density, you start floating. Then what you notice is, is that you have a hard time, like, going back down, like the gravity seems to be reversed. So you're floating away from your body and you even see people you know, and you're like, oh, I'm trying to get back. Now, if you have a tether, meaning that your body is still alive, you can go back into your body. This is called OBE. But at death, 
the tether, the, the other side of the tether, the body is not like functioning properly. There, you're, there's no catcher, as it's called. So what happens is, is that you start floating. And as you begin to float, you go into another firmament. This burns off a lot of the impurities that have been that have been accumulated during a physical life. Now, if your entire physical life has been based on impurities, meaning you've been taking in all this junk and junk and toxic mentally, spiritually, physically, uh, sight, hearing, taste, smell, touch, all that's going to burn up. And that's like basically having no memory. You're going to have no memory when you come back through. You only can fix yourself to truth. It will anchor you. What happened, remember what I'm saying, anchor, you need something to, when you start floating away from your body, the body, you're not the body, you're actually the entire planet. So the planet anchors you, roots you, grounds you, Kundalini, you have a relationship with Kundalini. I'm giving everyone the hints here. So when you come out of the body, the body just dissolves itself back into the earth as part of the, the anchor. And then you have the anchor point as earth and you keep traveling beyond with, with your tether, which is basically your memories that you even existed. OK, but what happens with people who don't have that going on, that relationship, they start to float. Right. Like uh, uh, in Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory on the first one. Remember when they were in there and they were <laughs> floating up and they had ate the bubbles and they kept going up and going up and they start getting scared because there was a fan up there. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I just give you a metaphor. What happens is as you keep going up, going up and you actually would think that you're about to kind of go into the sun, you hit what feels like glass. What these are, it, what this is, is the first, what's called, it's called permanent. It is the bubble, invi well, it's invisible to you, but the bubble or the atmosphere, uh, what do they call it, ionosphere or whatever, that now because of your frequency, like what you actually had left when all the impurities were burned up, that is the world you exist in. And Many people now, let me just finish, because if you're spiritually advanced, you can go, you go further. You even can come completely out of the what is the conceived universe. But for an individual who has no type of consciousness of this kind of stuff has been robbed mm. from them, then they stay stuck in this. And this is what you see on the astral plane. They, stu they stay stuck in this like in between plane. And they wander doing the same things that they were doing down here, hoping to get back, hoping to have another reincarnation, et cetera, et cetera. That's what I'm saying now. And so the key to this, again, is, is that when the person is, again, rising out of the body and they get caught into that, that particular sphere, that sphere, if, it, if you didn't go out past the moon, is called the dominion. This is also where most Christians go. Mm. Because the dominion is the domingo. It is the, what's called the Lord, Hadad. He, that's the, the moon. It was definitely something that everyone knew about not too long ago. It was another being that exercised dominion over the planet called Earth. There's been a back and forth skirmish over the gym, meaning that this planet, it, it's like a gym from space. So there's always things trying to hoard the gym. That's why they say the dragon is always found around treasure. So what is the treasure? The treasure is a gym. Well, what is the dragon? Is the evil, the greedy, the, the ones that want to take it, wrestle it away from you, the ones that want to divide it, cut it, burn it up shape, smolder it. <laughs> you see what I mean? That's what, that's what the symbolism of the dragon is. And that's what I said. The dragon is the creator of the world. Exactly. Because the dragon is the creator of the word. World and word. Mm. When this, ha this is speech. Uh -oh. Okay. This is the language. Because what language is the baby using? What language is the bird using? What language is the, uh, the dog using? <laughs> They're using instinct. <laughs> Right. So instinct is a language. So you can send off a pheromone or a scent from you that tells everyone around you what you think and believe. <laughs> right. So this is the form of communication that precedes language. That's why it says how the God known as Saturn, the one as the jealous God, came down and confused those that were building the tower or the jet or Kundalini was the introduction of language, which is mantra or the separation of the energies, which created a pan theism, pan meaning from one side to another. It's panning, like you say, pan the left and right. This means every single spectrum in which the sun goes in, there's a different God for each spectrum, right? We know that through the Egyptian mysticism. But then let's say you start adding another star. This is going to go on forever according to the stars in the sky. You can keep introducing a new personality. That's why they build the, they build the, the Kabbalistic structure. They Y, H, V, H, H, V, 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 R. They, and then they pronounce it blah, 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 blah. They just built basically a new structure. And then we're in here thinking things are new. So every time <laughs> something new comes up, we can be distracted a whole nother lifetime gazing in the face of Metatron or even lesser. That's what, and that's, that's the whole thing. But what I also want to, want to tell people is that 
I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. <laughs> like, I'm not saying this is yeah. bad or good. I'm just telling you, in immortality, you seem to find very strange things to do. I just seem to have a better idea that I'm just describing to everyone, which is total perfection of this vehicle and all subsequent vehicles to bring it completely online. So that way then, you know, you're a soul sovereign. So Sovereign doesn't have, a, uh, he doesn't have a passport. He doesn't need a passport. He doesn't have to ask permission to leave. All of that kind of uh, slavery stuff that they're, you're not a prisoner of war as, you're, as they have you down on paper with the United States and all these different uh, divided territories that have been divided up by the Nephilim or the kings, Khans, the Malachim, meaning the, that first, one of those, the yeah. first language to hit earth is the language of the Malachim. It's like basically a dot to dot with the stars. They say, well, we're bringing the power down from heaven to earth. Oh, come on. That is really the whole reason why the power is up there so that it's not down here. Why bring it down here? Why not go up there? This is like, this is common sense that you have to, this is also what happens when you go into heavy levels of, uh, of, of spiritual enlightenment is because all these challenges come to you in different kind of ways. And it's not always to be courageous. Many, the next chakra after courageous is generally compassion. And this becomes so difficult, some people just stay in courage. Meaning that when it's time to so love the same, go ahead, go ahead. You say, so we got to be compassionate. That's what I'm saying. It's like there, there may be a time in which you may be, have to be courageous and that's i.e. the root chakra. And then there, the next chakra, you will have to be compassionate. But because these are two mm. opposite, it's another challenge. Like, why send you through the same drills? <laughs> it's like, you can, you know, be mm. courageous. You know, be courageous. You did that good last time. That's kind of how the world does. That you get a job and they keep telling you, oh, do better. Write another paper. Oh, write another good paper. Ooh, <laughs> people, people think that I want to sit on the radio and do this all of my life and write books all my life. No, no, I'm, I'm closing this chapter. My, my, my goal was not to waste everyone's time. We're going into a, a huge conglomerate. We're going to educate children. We're going to make movies. We're going to activate humans. Like, by all means, it's not something... <laughs> That's going to stop with me. It's already taking its course. Like the movie Pumpkinhead, you got to just let it take its course now. <laughs> it's too late. And I wasn't the one who started it, meaning it's too late for the ones in which to conceive of stopping our wholeness. You see what I mean? When the day in which we all come together, the day that is glorious, like that is not something that will be impeded by any level of darkness. Like you ever seen darkness run up to light? No, it can't. It's not even physically uh, through physics possible. You see what I mean? So we have to know where we are. When we stand up, darkness retreats to the corner, meaning that when you finally tell everyone what you really are, which is unlimited, that's when they'll shut up trying to give you a title. Other than that, all of this stuff that's being developed now is only to pigeonhole a person further. Look at what they did with the Mormon church. They create one faction that initiates people from Hollywood, another faction that just initiates old Quakers. So there's really nothing in between. Or, excuse me, everything is in between, right? Somebody from Hollywood and a Quaker. Mm. <laughs> so every other organization in between attracts the ones of the scientific minds, the ones that are the, the brilliant, but it's the same story. Look outside, look outside for it. You'll find it. No, 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 no. You can't see it unless you first clean the filters inside. Each chakra mm. is like a lens. It is a crystal and you are looking through it. So if your crystals is cracked <laughs> and they're all warped, because of chakra damage, which happens to all of us, we're as, as magnetars as we are, gliding through the celestials and then colliding in with a comet, <laughs> especially when we're trying to, uh, to have that time of impact, <laughs> meaning that here on the earth, we collide with people. This is even called sex or six. This is the creation of more particles of us. Once you come together, boom, then all this friction and thing generated, then one piece breaks off the seed. And then now it lands into the fertile ground and then another one starts going, then it's replicated. There, I, there was nothing else, especially iPhone 5, that I found that was more fascinating than that once I stopped looking at it like the cooties. <laughs> it's like all mm. of the, the, the programming will be undone by deprogrammers. We are willing mm. to stay here immortally fixing the issue because there's nowhere else to go anyway when it's all inside. That's what I was saying. Where are you going to go? Where, like everyone trying to run out there, trying to jump on some ship. Fine. You eventually have to come to see me. And this is what I want people to, in a sense, install in your mind. Understand all of these forces and all these different things. When you become everything, they're going to eventually have to come see you. <laughs> everything here until it comes into the total realization that it is everything will run these infinite loops. So you can either be the millstone or the grain then. 
You can either, like in, in, on this particular dualistic dimension, you could be the millstone that is crushing the grain or you could be the grain down there getting crushed. This means if you keep letting this outside external world dictate to you what is the truth and you never go into anything to experience something from yourself, you will waste your entire uh, 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 life and your deeds will be dispersed on the threshing floor because there will be, they will be nil. Meaning that deeds are not necessarily blogging according to what the ancestors were really up to. They were running a gauntlet. <laughs> like they weren't trapped in some net. You see what I mean? Whether it was an internal net or a planned net, i.e. planet. So this is this it can it can get this point to this point, though, because this is the incubation process. This is where you can kind of ride it off. If you feel a little bad about yourself right now for getting caught in this, don't think that way. It is a womb. It is a matrix. It is a place where things are cultivated. It is our mother. It is material. She is at times a material girl. She changes like the faces of the moon. And then at many times we're just wondering, like, how can we keep dealing with this? But in reality, it's not something that will actually stop. So what we'll actually figure out this then, and coming to the conclusion of thought, is that it was immortality that we were afraid of, not death. And so this is, death was created in order for us to get rest. That's why they said the gods are all forgetful. They sleep. You have to constantly remind them. Who is the gods? <laughs> um, <clears throat> last time I checked, etymolog etymologically, these people were greater than gods, because God is no other than the Germanic god, Gu, who's a ghost. And that's the past. So we're being haunted by ghosts. We get haunted by the things that we have been involved in, in the, fir the forming of the foundation of what we're standing on. And, but don't be surprised if what you're standing on is stronger than you. Think about it. We jump on a horse, right? I realize why this is the year of the horse. My sign is also the Chinese sign of the horse. And I had to ha happen to ride a horse for the first time over the New Year's. And I realized the whole connection because I said, man, I do kind of feel like sometimes people are riding on my back, but I feel like also I'm strong enough. And then I got a deeper metaphor. I said, yeah, because look at this. See, now, now when you're on the horse, it's easy for you to go ride up to the cow and go ride up to the buffalo because you feel like, look, I got a horse with me. He, so one or two things have either happened. Either horse has been domesticated or he's your friend. So imagine riding in there on a lion and then how all of this, these different beings beholding you, et cetera, as you're painting a picture in your mind would be like thinking in their mind, well, either he's formed a friendship with the lion or he's domesticated him. Right. And then but look, look at the stature and then take it and keep going up higher. Now you're riding on a planet and then other planets are looking at you like, oh, man, he's riding on planets. Then keep taking it back further. Universes. You see what I mean? That's the birth of a macro. When you start pulling out of these spheres and basically a lot, it's like climb. That's the real visualization, left brain, logical side of climbing the ladder. Because what you're doing is instead of crumbling the foundation below you, as we always want to tear one of these organizations and one of these territories down, we leave it there as the foundation of things. And we know what not to do. <laughs> we know where things basically don't work. And somebody else has already done the dirty work in a tense of fooling, uh, 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 or, or fooling around and messing up the entire thing. So I know what not to do. Now, what greater glory is that? Thank you, human. You just showed us other humans exactly what not to do. Let us continue building. We will, and as soon as we mm -hmm. discover immortality and how to wake you from the sleep again, we'll wake you. And that's, that's really the agreements that I'm looking for with people, if I'm going to call them my family, my friends, my brothers, my sister, et cetera. I'm looking, look, if I get way out there on a dimension, this whole thing spirals out, and you happen to make it to ascension and complete revelation of the entire thing that I kept talking about, man, come get me. <laughs> don't leave me out there because remember I was still one of the ones that was what you were standing on so you see how when you just take that and you bring it you become present then you ask yourself these Illuminati these different people man these are characters in the play we take it from here it's like okay you know what straight I'll take it from here we do what we need to be doing for our people and all of these people are our people. We collapse this color spectrum because, see, remember, when they shine a the clear light through the prism or the prison or the pyramid, right? That's the pen. It's phi, serpent. When they shine a the clear light through them, it makes seven colors. This is division. This is basically the languages where everyone starts looking at the skin suits as being what is actually the differentiation, right? So, but when you collapse that, i.e. collapse the chakras, because, you know, a chakra is a color, too. That's what makes up the body. The body is the universe, meaning united, but in conflict. Uni, united, verse, meaning against. 
meaning that there is constant mm. wars going on here inside of the body. You drink something like a, you drinks, you know, a little 40 proof in the mouth. And then now there's a war on the liver. <laughs> the liver's like, man, what? You just made me mad. And the liver fires up, right? Then after it's upset, it starts cooling off. It gets acidic. <laughs> and it's all toxified. You see, it doesn't feel well. And this is basically our body are, is the pieces of the animals that are in nature that were used to form and fashion the physical body on the physical plane. That's what you saw in those hieroglyphs and different things the ancestors were doing is that they were building what we call the netherworld. But I haven't really seen too many cats on this dimension, literally cats, because there's a difference between a cat and a lion. But I haven't seen anybody built that way in a certain tense to be hanging around the netherworld, working with the rudimentary basic building blocks, i.e. base world of everything to try to put something together that's going to be solid later on. And they always go run all the way to the crown. Oh, I'm accepted. I'm with the king. I'm knighted. I got the print. They go run into that before they go into where their own people are. And again, who are your people? You go, anytime you go in with your people, you, all the way, you always go from what you perceive as the bottom up. That way you don't have to come back down in a certain tense, meaning that if you go from the deep part of things and you raise it up, all of the other stuff is gonna just have the ripple effects. And that's why I was saying before, cross it over. You work with the children, that's the beginning of the timeline in a certain tense. Mm -hmm. It's gonna send a ripple effect into the rest of this. You go to base world, you bring that up, it's going to send a ripple effect into all the subsequent dimensions aligning them. That's the straight line 2012 activation, straight up the uh, middle part of the caudaceous staff, right to the globe or the solar uh, piece that's right in the center. That's the pipeline, as I said, when you see the sun, you're looking into an open piece of a pipe. Remember that the sun is a portal. It's not to bring it to you back as a globe. This is the this is a, a problem in the differential of how you're looking at the system. It is a it is a whole too. And then what's on the other side is pure energy, something that is not divided. And to me, I ain't so heard nothing like I mean, that. <laughs> so is that why our ancestors worshipped the sun like that? Because they knew that it was a portal. Well, again, I, I wouldn't even use the word as worship because the word worship means basically to cause conflict, i.e., war ship. So it's basically using okay, your body okay, to go, yeah. at fight, go into war. But I will tell you that there was a, already a knowledge that it was a gateway in a tent. So there was never a disconnection. As long as you saw the sun, you could go into meditation easy. It wasn't even going into meditation. These are like after the vehicle is broken. But there was a, there was a, a, a straight connection. So now, now remember, this is so intricate because then when you see that Saturn carries the sky, so that is symbolic of the doctor with his knowledge of falsehood, cutting the baby's umbilical cord before it, and then the baby's not allowed to stay attached in the period of time in which it needs to develop right after the birth, right? So then if you understand uh, the Saturnalian connection to wisdom and then language and the serpent, etc., then you, what you'll see is, is that the knowledge of what the sun actually is has been cut by the Saturnalian concept and explanations of what the sun really is. So in effect, mm. it has cut everyone off from their ancestors. That's why you'll find some of the, the greatest worship that was going on in the old days was Sat. Even in India, Sat Sum, Sat Nam, Sat is truth. They keep going in, going in, going in because there was a usurper known as Brahm that went in and cut them. That's the same story as Yalda Baal. It said, I'm the God. They introduced the concept that there is one that is greater, thus everyone else is less. Any kind of chosen you're the one kind of concept is the work of deuce deuce is zeus he's the deceiver meaning deceive he he basically is a, he's carrying that skype which is called a seaver it basically uh, uh, separates root flowers and plants and all sorts of things, cuts them at the root, that kind of activity, right? So that's where, you, you know, you can go into the symbolics and get, you know, the entire story. And there's also more to, of a story of exactly how that was done. And it's because Saturn was born outside, as far as the planetary system is concerned, outside of the planetary system. Thus had to develop the rings in order to protect itself. This is the, the ancient knowledge of what Saturn's real role is. And then eventually went into what we seem to be headed into with what happened with technology, where you basically gain these languages, you gain these codes, you start doing Fortran, basic, COBOL, then you go into C++, C++, then you just keep going. And remember, these languages that are going into the computers, everyone just thinks that's just stuff to program the internet, but this is ether, ethernet. Like it's to send out over Wi-Fi, <laughs> Wi-Fi, why not other geometry? <laughs> You see what I mean? Like it's it's wired down like that. But again, it's 
it's done in a, in a circular way. That's called weaving webs. That's why in Bohemian Grove says spiders weave not thy webs here, meaning, hey, those who use magic do not practice magic on other people that are here because what they do is they design in circles. They say the square in the circle, etc. They design in shapes, meaning their companies and different things that they sell. They design in a way that actually traps a person. It keeps the person dependent on that, 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 that whatever it is. That's why our work is to design sustainable, self-sustainability, substantiation meaning create something that actually develops a system where people become more and more independent rather than dependent i watched that today yeah i watched that episode today the whole two hours self-substantiation exactly self-substantiation the <laughs> that real was a thing good one. So yeah, I mean, it, it's already been a great conversation. Like even now, I could, I could, I feel comfortable because I could totally mess it up. Because something, but I, but I'm great from here. I could just always cut the audio off. No, I'm joking, but serious. It's like it's, it's you know, sometimes it's very difficult to transmit a very uh, powerful message because the receivers on the other end sometimes be doing something weird. Like I had a couple of shows just recently, and I felt literally a wall with the individuals that, uh, the individual that I was talking to, and it's because of their unwillingness to accept the truth. <laughs> he was fighting so much, he mm, kind of looked cross-eyed yeah. during the into the interview i was like man i need to start uh picking who i really do these shows with all instead of just going completely in and say okay i don't care if there's one person there i'm gonna do a show because some of these individuals it gave me almost a headache when i was done but check this out here's another piece of knowledge <laughs> really briefly so i you know i want to make sure I, I give some people some pieces to some puzzles now there i've been i've been on this yeah. venusian thing which is basically this knowledge of venus to identify it completely now the heart symbol that you're seeing is a symbol of venus it's, it's known as a vive OK, and it's a cult symbol because it's supposed to bring down the power of Venus, which is love, luxury and all of the stuff that seemed to get a cat in trouble after a while. So what happens is, is that when you see the heart symbol, what it is, is it's two phi's coming together. Of course, this is two human beings coming together, i.e. they're in a sexual communion. Right. So this particular knowledge, which kind of degraded itself into a different levels of tantrics. And, and I'm not saying there's anything against tantrics, but there became an external version of tantrics that has something to do with like external intercourse, which is also uh, uh, possible with you and, and someone like your wife, etc. But when you just have open temples where sexual intercourse can take place, i.e. the temple prostitute, then you got an entirely different dynamic going on and that's why you see in the Christian religion there was harlots and things involved in this kind of terminology being used because it's just the indication that this knowledge of Venus is present I don't want to get get people into thinking oh is he saying something to get harlots man my, my daddy is and my mama is and then you see or I am and you see what I mean I, that's not what we're talking about we're talking mm -hmm. about certain energies resonate to certain planets meaning certain spirits are around you because you act certain kind of ways and that's what they're attracted to right so what happens is, is that this mm -hmm. Venus thing bought this this uh uh, tradition known as Yoruba. Okay. Now this word Yoruba, of course, gets us into voodoo, gets us into many things. But before that word was Yoruba, it was actually Arabu. And Arabu was what we actually call the Arabs. Now the actual word Yoruba la later on became the word Europe. So it's, again, so it's not a black and white thing that we're talking about here. It's actually a specific state of consciousness and a system that uses luxury and a vacuum of pleasure in order to keep the individuals into in, under another level of the dominion. So then you got in a certain tense and I'm not. I'm not trying to uh, get people to look at the planets themselves because that, again, would be the esoteric version. But the exoteric story that has been told about the moon and the gods and all this kind of stuff, because remember what I told you earlier, they take the, the planetary celestial body and then they create the story and they and then people believe in that story. And then after a while, it actually becomes true. You can pull energy from the story. This is called an idolon. Mm meaning an idea of something that has become so strong that it actually seems to do something. This is like your shadow. It, it's a, it's a basically a dense, a dense version of or a shadow or a similitude of you. And so, you know, this gets into deep stuff because this is the birth of small face. This is when your individualized identity of what you've been programmed with can actually go into another matrix next, just another one of these same type of Metatron cube cooked up matrices, and then not know edgewise because you're actually developing these, uh, uh, in a certain sense, these small face, meaning small ideas, small time shells that are basically just fodder for, you know, creatures that we don't even need to discuss. So it's basically one, one second, one second, seven. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
We got we got a person that's been on hold for a while. Excellent. Let's get some uh, let's get some calls in here. <laughs> All right, here we go. So this is uh area code seven oh eight three five five six is the last four digits. You on the line. Hey, what's up? Hey, Wholeness. How you doing? Man, I'm I'm doing it, man. I'm just, I'm feeling good in twenty fourteen. Yeah, man, the messages are awesome. Real powerful. Um, yeah, my question was about the cell salts. Actually, uh, I noticed on that new Realm Dynamics website, you said there's a 13 salt mm -hmm. that wasn't bioplasma. And I was just had a quick question about, you know, how do you clarify that for me? It's actually on Realm Dynamics. It's actually called Aurum, Aurum Meticulum, and that's that's a 13 cell salt made of gold. So that that okay. that is the. Because I did. called, I actually. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say, I called the um, the business that I bought the cell salt kit from, and they said, like, we don't know anything about it. <laughs> of course salt. they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's not even like a conspiracy. They really don't know. <laughs> like I said, look, man, uh, some of this stuff ain't a conspiracy no more for these people. They just don't know. And even some of the other ones, like uh, we were talking about the private occultation. This is basically when, like, an artist or somebody who's been going through this occultation that they don't even realize is going on, even when it's too late. And it's like... Looking at Cam, Cam is Kim, of course, Jay-Z signed him. And then you look at the other connection between Jay-Z and Marcy, the Marcy Project being the Serpent Charmer. And then you got Nas over here, which means to, to, uh, to disperse, or basically to disperse to people. And then, and, but I'm, I'm sure all these guys are not thinking at all about what exactly is going on in a certain tense. They're kind of flirting with it, but they don't even realize they're actually fitting. And then now they're about to go ham. Then you got Kane from the West, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it's like, and it's hey, well, 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 you know, you know what's funny is that um, Eminem, who's like huge right now, he has a, a new song called Rap God. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, you know, so, but that's what I was saying about, again, this hit, this private occultation has got many of these people involved in things. And I'm not going to say that necessarily that individuals such as Jay-Z don't know what's going on because that's kind of obvious. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of other individuals involved that don't even realize that it is their name, their mantra that is being used as a bridge to cross many of these individuals over into their next initiation. Then once they're done, they're discarded. That's why, because some people say, well, he didn't stay with Cam, so how could Cam be Kim? How could that have been the Kimite initiation to him and the tribe of Ham or Calf Ray? Which is actually what they took from Dr. Malachi and went with what Dr. Was, Dr. Malachi was saying not to do, but I'm still not, again, standing on his side, but then trying to enact the power because they already knew what they wanted to do with it, which was just gain fame in the world. But then... Is it, but again, is it a writer, meaning another spirit that is present with the mind state? Because when the mind state is in like the stinking thinking mode, it attracts the ancestors, i.e. the vi old vibration of deceit. You see what I mean? Like many people need to understand the ancestors, it doesn't mean all positive things. Ancestor, if you don't go far enough back on the timeline to where you collapse time, you get yourself in the old time before you knew certain things. So you could have addictions. You could be living in a tribe where the complete tribe is being wiped out. You could have certain things uh, stuck in your mind from different kind of pains from other biorhythms. So, you know, this is things that that's why there was a necessity in a tense for uh, a great deal of spiritual evolution evolution in this planet, especially innovation, because you had to factor this kind of stuff in. Like right now, it, it may seem silly to everyone else, but Venus is in retrograde and probably will be in retrograde, I think, for another week. What this means is that all relationships basically go crazy right now, like just massive arguments, you know. And then if you if you can really see this, <laughs> if you were like, let's say again, on the air and you're looking down, what you will actually see is, OK, it's about to be New Year's. There needs to be certain levels of division because there needs to be a great level, more of a higher level of intensity of this same kind of chaotic energy that comes behind division, right? So Venus goes retrograde right over the time that most people really want to go out and party. And then they say always in their mind, whoever I'm going to spend New Year's with, that's who I'm going to be with. <laughs> So, right. So then so then they're thinking also, man, because of this quarrel they just had because Venus is going retrograde. Maybe that's not the person for me. So they may even go out that night and even go be with someone else that they wouldn't have normally been with because 
if Venus wasn't in retrograde pushing that that intensity you see what I mean like that intensity and in you so you have to almost get a bulletin in the morning like someone like a commander on a ship saying okay all passengers on the ship do uh, realize that especially if you're in some kind of relationship this doesn't just have to do with uh, physical relationships or love type relationships but any relationship at all that those relationships may come under question we will report back to you within two weeks when Venus comes out of retrograde stay balanced <laughs> And now we bring you back our normal scheduled enlightenment program of not watching TV. You know what I mean? Something like that. It's basically, this is like stuff that if you kind of went against, everyone looked at you silly because there was another thing that you can do during this time. Like you could build almost the opposite. Actually, you could build your relationship stronger during these times if you were aware of certain things happening. But not being aware. Some people say, well, I don't believe in that. And I can get that whole concept too because I hate being superstitious. But there's certain things that if you just know about, if you can cram it all in that brain, it may be or in that aura, wherever it goes, it may be beneficial for you to know. And here's why. Are you going to go and plant... <laughs> Um, let's say something like a papaya, which is like a tropical plant, plant, uh, plant in, in the time of the cold. There, if you look at a farmer, if there's anything you can know from him, there are certain things that got to be planted during certain times. Other than that, it's just futile what you're about to do. So that's really what we're talking about here. There are certain forces, like the same one that makes you go into puberty, that doesn't seem to be like something that you have a great level of control over until you get on a certain level, mainly beyond dominion, right? Because when you're under dominion, this means somebody else is making all the decisions for you, telling you exactly what should be done. And this is being done not on a level that you're saying, yes, OK, yeah, I want that. No. OK, no, I don't want that. This is being done subtly. This is just as sure as the force that you call breath. This is just as sure as the energy and element that's alive you call water. Ooh. You take it in and you don't think edgewise because it's not like you really have a choice. Like, I don't I'm not into water today. Me and water fell out. In fact, I'm not going to drink water no more. It's over between me and water. So you got to realize that there are elements and forces that when you are now in the physical body, and this is why the, many of these quote unquote more advanced humans that went into this spiritual state, they realized that the body had also some drawbacks <laughs> that if you didn't understand exactly how to get out of it, that shell or shield is this really called shell again, same word became a prison. <laughs> Because if you can't get out of it, it basically becomes infinite layers keeping you inside. You keep reincarnating into these different parts of the cycle, but you never get out. Wonderland. Mm. The maze with the minotaur in the middle. <laughs> right? So it's about walking yourself, which is the diagram of the mind, walking yourself out of the quadrants, especially in the right-right hemisphere or in the left-left hemisphere, and back into the center, which is called the bifrost or the, the corpus calyxum, the bridge in the center of the brain. Sit on the bridge then of your ship. Right. Like you, the captain, but you all over there at communications and are all over there at weapons. Most of the time, <laughs> you got weapons most of the time ready to fire the death ray. Right. So get on the bridge and start really commanding the Jed, not everybody else. You're telling this person, uh, this, this is called the Jed or the Jeb because it's the Lord of the earth, meaning the body is the Lord of the earth. It is the tender of the earth. Lord only means you take care of the people of wherever you're lording over. That's why in Britain, they, yes, my Lord, yes, yes, my liege. It's because they, they have control over that particular area. So the Lord of the earth, earth being synonymous with the body, is you. And so that's the one that sends all the commands down into the body oh you're definitely not going to be eating that today like in fact get we need to go jog like all of you guys are slack because we could be doing so much more it's not like i'm just dis dis disappointed at what you've done thus far after all look at the atmosphere but this is 2014 and time's up so that's what the mm -hmm. message I want to bring today to everyone. Time's up. Like, they're playing the game. Like, this, when I, I've analyzed the entire thing, obviously, you can kind of tell somewhat that. But <laughs> I'm seeing it's a loop. It just keeps playing. There's other components that come into it that seem like something different. But what they really are are things that from further back when you forgot. See, because the thing is with this whole omniscience, omnipresent, giant magnetar being is that it, it has an infinite memory. It's almost like it's photographic. And you see an example, excuse me, not almost like, but it is photographic. We still have people in this world that bear a photographic memory. So I'm not talking about something that is otherworldly. But this memory gives you power because you never forget. Like if you never forgot every mm. single planet you've actually entered and every experience that you've had and all the things that you may have done that led you in one direction or another and that can now let you choose the more balanced direction, then you're on point. Literally, you're focused. Mm. You're like... 
always riding in between both planes. You're basically a time lord. Bifrost Walker, Netter, Messiah in a tense, Bodhisattva. This is an individual that basically they, it's a clear face on them. They choose what they're going to go to next based on what someone else chose. This is the key to, to ultimate currency. You don't go into the world in a tense trying to create things. You let the world create things from what you're developing and you give it freely. If people want to know what is what was the key to all this, and when the Code of Matrix was written, which was every single thing that I can summon to assist humanity, in the end I gave it away for free. After all, how could you charge someone for freedom? And that reversed the entire cycle of not only where I was headed, but where so many of us are headed. And I started swimming back up the drain rather than getting trapped below the speed of light in a vortex and basically hanging out lifetime after lifetime, not really doing anything. Basically, I even, you haven't even got off the front porch in a certain tense. So this time is time for you to get into the actual throne seat of the, uh, of the bridge of the body, as I said before, the captain's chair, come out, of the, come out of the Cossacks, which is the tail tucked underneath the back of the bone in fear, and the tail been cut off. This is what the physical body, obviously, through domestication has gotten the tail cut off. A lot of people are still born in India, different places still with tails, showing you evidence of this. But when the tail or the story, T-A-L-E, a tail, or the story is cut <laughs> off, meaning that you don't understand your ancestry, your history, you don't got no memory, you don't got nothing, then that's when domestication, because that's the only time you cut off something like a pit bull's tail right is now he's being domesticated mm. so that domestication rides inside of your consciousness as fear fear being then the mind controller fear being what causes you to contract when someone scares you rah, mm. then you jump back that means you close up so the chakras then if you're always scared of this massive experience because the dogma that you're in is telling you to stop this, meaning the dogma, the God dog is telling you to stop this. You, when you look at the ancient picture, it shows you a dog guarding the tree of life. It wasn't a, a, a cherubim. <laughs> it was a dog. And that, mm. that dog is what they're calling God. That is Anubis. That is the deity that is blocking everyone from the tree of knowledge, the life, which is that all is self. It is the God dog that sits up in front of everyone and says, I'm the only God. Why is Mother Sophia saying, y'all the Baal, you're lying. Y'all the Baal is a lion snake, mm -hmm. right? Meaning he bear in a man, he bears, and then he's got the square in the hand. He's got all these symbols that just bear symbols of one who wants to shape and fashion a world, but keeps failing at it. Mm -hmm. So thus our world is failing. So that's why I say we smite his mm -hmm. face because they still bring him mm. forth. When they say he, even though in their language he means she, but it means basically a birther. He in, English, uh, in Hebrew, excuse me, means female. Why in English it means a male. He is female, okay? So when, what I'm saying here is that every time it says, my God, he's a, he's a jealous God. He's a powerful God. He, he, he. This means they don't know the truth because how could anything that has mm. power only be one pole? It would have to have balanced his pose just like any other generator or it doesn't get accepted. That's why when he proclaimed that he was the God, he did it from inside the earth. How are you going to be the God of something when you're inside of it? That's not how it works. That's why they keep using the word God because they're really telling the truth. It's a ghost or a shade or a Shaddai, the hopo bird that Solomon had to call back, still underneath the tree in the shadow. That's why I say they, they lurk in the shades developing this zigzag world, which is the pass on the side of the solar path, right? Look on the Caldacia staff, you got the two serpents zigzag, zig up the tree. Then you look at the Sapphira, those worlds on the left and the right side are basically the created worlds of illusion. This is basically everything mm. but consciousness. We're gonna, like the masonry says, mm. we'll, we'll teach you about the truth, but we can't lead you to it. How does that even work? But that's in the beginning of the book. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So it's not like nothing is going without being said. It's just done with a forked tongue. And I know we're getting to the end of the conversation here. But again, we're dealing with the being that has the other half of the language, meaning English, 26 mm -hmm. letters. 26 times 2 is 50, 52, right? There's 52 weeks mm -hmm. in a year. 52 makes one annu. There's 52 cards in the deck. That's tarot, rotate, rotus, sator. That's the uh, whole anagram for tarot, okay? That's the wheel of life, the zodiac, okay? So then, so mm -hmm. where, if the English language has 26 char characters, where are the other 26? 
That's the decimal demon script right. where the numbers are, where the letters are actually mirrored against each other. A has another half then. So when you draw A with one on top and A with another on the bottom, then you collect the, con connect the slats. That gives you a star of David. When you c connect B with this mirror, it gives you the eight. And that gives you the, again, the dollar signs, infinities and other occult symbols. So same thing with the C. It becomes the C that is divided as a C by itself. But when you pair it with another C, then it actually becomes a circle. But until then, the C will always be divided because Moses part the waters. Remus, who is Moses, part the water. So then we go to D. D is the same thing. He's the divided one. He's the devil. He's Diablo. He's dangerous. He's destruction. Why? Because he's half of a circle. You pair a D with another D, it makes a circle. So do you see why with the language, if you don't have the other half of the language, then you basically go into duality. So everything you say then is somehow dualistic. You think it means one thing, mm -hmm. but the person's actually taking it a different way. Why? Because they perceive it through a dual plane, either through two ears, two eyes, two holes in their nose. You see? Look at the phi. The phi is mm -hmm. represented within the body through symmetry. That's the heart symbol. When two things are paired together, that's the only time that they're actually complete. Until then, they're actually divided. Mm. That's why they call it repair, meaning to fix it by putting it back together. But as long as it actually remains separate, that's why they say, oh, there's a war between man, man and woman. That is the war they're instigating. Because as long as the ground never comes together with the power, with the, as long as the, uh, the ground never comes together with the amplification, then we have no power. I, shoot, I used to run around the streets mm -hmm. with massive amplifiers in the car beating down the block. And I know I can tell you about ground because if it's not tightened down to the trunk properly, you, it starts smelling like fire. And sometimes you burn the voice coils, which is like, ugh, especially if you had those false gates. And other than that, so what I'm telling people is, is that I didn't even graduate high school. I finished high school at 16, then went to the streets. They told me I couldn't turn my paperwork in until I turned, uh, 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 actually I finished at 15. They told me I couldn't turn my paperwork in until I was 16 because I had already completed all the books. It's like I like with a, at least one Nas had one script. He said, I, I, I would have went to I would be Ivy League if America had to had played fair, meaning that if you put me on an equal footing or you put many of us on an equal footing, we will excel. It's just that there's always mm. lambs on the path, meaning things that actually trip us up. Mm things that uh, 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 bl uh, stop us. And that's why, again, the language is the lamb on the path because it moves like a block in the mind. It's not smooth. All the ancient languages, the Sanskrit, these languages roll like fire off the tongue. They're languages of power. That's why they call them fire language. Fire is frequency. And this tends to shape and fashion and create worlds. We get a block world language. It's all basically squares. We're basically hanging around oh. squares when we say what we need to say. Then it goes into the mind and it's moving all cumbersome. It's not smooth. It's not running in that circuit that's mm -hmm. all across the brain that's actually activating the left and the right quadrant. But look, I will still tell you, watch these languages. Because some people say, well, that means there's a greater language. Well, when you go to Chinese, which it seems like most of these languages came from, because you can study language all your life and only scratch the surface of how many characters in Chinese. They are really into the Confucius. So what happened is, is that... This language in itself is the divisor, as I said before. So, but in Chinese, it ap actually operates four quadrants of the brain for deeper programming. You see, so you got ops Ooh. going on in different continents of the planet where certain people are not allowed to mix with other people as far as the core population. Why one place is just a breeding ground completely, period. Everything, different families and group members are allowed to be together around different tribes and things just so that they mix, right? So stop becoming the experiment it by through this division every time we keep grabbing a label that's created now we are neo this and massive unitarian blah blah, blah. even i'm moving my way i'm moving my way constantly away from that people need to see that don't expect me to be like the same thing of when you first signed on i told you i'm really into this but there's many people i'm still i go back to the website still talking about the same thing it's like are you in spirituality or of spirituality or what is that are you being manipulated by spirituality because spirituality has to do with spirits, so don't think you're going to see these things. Spirituality in a dictionary means opposed to material, meaning material is visible, spirits are not visible. But there is a spiritual plane, so most of the people be in, influenced by the spirits riding on top of them like they're horses <laughs> and guiding them to different destinations. Now it's time for us to it, it, see who are we faring. And this is also what you do in your life, too. Like, who are you representing? Like, who are you with? What's your team? Because we all got a team. 
This is the other thing. You get mm. your team because look, look how just in basic stuff in life, Ferrari's got a team and that ensures that they win the cup. <laughs> it's every single guy on that and, and woman on that team are, are, is in one accord with what exactly is about to happen and what they're attempting to do. That needs to be formed so that those teams, when they become more in commonality, begin to come closer together. That's how you see organisms come together. It doesn't just all clump together at one time. You get groups and then it starts expanding from there. So I highly suggest people look at what this thing really is about. Get with people who you know that are on that resonant frequency and build a body. Someone's the head. Still realizing though the head without no feet don't go nowhere. Meaning nobody is sitting back there acting like their little position is going to actually sustain everybody because that's not the whole goal. That's you working in the wrong direction with, you know, by yourself again in the individuality. Last thing here. People think that there's power in individuality. Nothing could be further from the truth. Think about it. Everyone thinks that their quote unquote unique individual character is actually really their power in getting them somewhere. So notice the program running in the world. If when we're all together, we can accomplish magnificent things because we can build something. Like if I'm sitting here and I'm trying to fabricate something that's looking to the extent of a gyroscope, I need precision, but I don't have no knowledge about this, but I got a guy in the other room that does, or you know, a woman in the other room that does, I can go to them and have them do it. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. We need to bring this stuff back to square one as far as the physical reality and see if you have people around you that can do certain things, they may not be excellent about the other thing, but that's the whole thing is when the, when the group comes together, each person teaches the other person what they don't know while mm -hmm. contributing to that mm -hmm. then what does it build then it builds a perfect body this body is strong it becomes a corp meaning well, a corpus but when you say group right mm -hmm. when, you, when you're saying group mm -hmm. what do you mean by group because you got a whole bunch of like groups like in the wapians you got the yamazi you got these like what do you mean? Well, what you what you are out what, here confused. We what, all confused out here. Well, what what you have Especially is is you like have. You know. Well, you'll see this. You'll see this play because remember what I'm explaining to you is just basic principles of how things come together. But you'll see them also them meaning the the malevolent yeah. forces. They're part of the body. Really, really, and it tends to do the same thing because they build uh, consistent groups, and then those groups eventually come together. And I'm gonna show you it in dogma. There's Islam. There's Buddhism. And then there's Christianity is intense as being the pillars of, of, of dogma or religion. All these religions are mm -hmm. really from the same source. I definitely know that 100 percent. But mm -hmm. all the people mm -hmm. that are involved in it, even the spirits, will not figure that out to a certain part of the timeline. But all of them will then come together. So in a certain sense, all of those religions are sent out more or less like a net so that it grabs different peoples of different persuasions. And then it brings them all together by unifying them under some common cause, by saying, oh, we all worship the same God, okay? So now reverse that instead of explosion, because that's where that's gonna end up going, because after the one God decides to destroy the entire world, that's when you'll see the explosion. So on another timeline, it was exactly mm -hmm. opposite, which was implosion, meaning that the same method took place where the group started coming together, but the commonality was each other. We started realizing again that mm. we were more alike than we were separate, but it didn't happen at first. Like what you're seeing right now, I'm not talking about something that is yet to occur. It's going on right now. But now, like I talked to certain individuals that are on different lifestyle, different paths, and they're starting to understand this because we're all coming to that same part in a row off the path which is the center point mm. again, right? So for that one moment, that's, that's why they was talking about this whole 2012 lineup, whatever, all that is is the center path of the college. At one point, we're meeting there, and it's like a crossroads, though. Some will choose to go straight. I said, I got me a fork on the road, and I went straight. Yeah, right. The reality is, is that you go straight at that point, or it, that point trans, it, go, it, come, it goes on, and then it, as time is constantly moving, it's over in a certain tense, meaning that there's a, now is the time to understand what's going on with the spad gyrus and the monatomic. Understand what's going on with all the traditions and things that information is being ready to make available to you. Get your body cleansed with the internal cleansing kits. All these kind of things are the time to do it now because there's a door open. And they, they can call that age of Aquarius or whatever. The door can only lead to knowledge. So if knowledge is a present on the dimension, that means some door is open. So this means that we're all at this crossing point where even uh, 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 Rockhead Bob 
is on the show and we are laughing together in a certain tense and or or or, or <laughs> sister sister betty from uh uh from Pre united presbyterian who's got done dealing with the deacons at this point and went and ventured out to see if there was something else me and her are now sitting on the line so we're at some so what this looks like okay. then and, and that's what I keep encouraging everyone. We're going to take one more seven, seven. We're going to take one more question. All right, let's try to take Stay one more question then. <laughs> Let's see what you say real quick. All right. <laughs> Area code 707, last four, three, two, two, four. You're on the line. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. How you guys doing? You guys are uh, sitting that knowledge. I appreciate it. No doubt. Uh, I got a quick question for seven. Do it. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, you, was talking, uh, you was talking about the... Uh, I read or watched that old two hour uh, spiritual world um, episode, but um, with your vibrations and the uh, frequencies that each individual has um, just in, in a sleep sense of uh, sometimes, you know, go to sleep and uh, I actually feel like a vibration. And before you go into this deepest, deepest sleep, does that have anything to do with what you're talking about? For sure. Or even uh, picking sure. up uh, like a tone, say like if you hit a, hit one of those, those metal tone things and you hear like a B long beat right before you go into this, I'd say a different plane, different, different place, not here, but you are still aware, right? Like you wake up and then you just open your eyes. Like you never were asleep, but time has passed. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Cause the chakras come well, online. What, it, it makes an audible sound that a sound that's audible to the third ear. Cause people talk about the third eye. There's also a third ear. So it makes a tone. It sounds like ringing in the ear. Or, or sometimes yeah. bells, but more like a, a yeah. ringing that keeps getting more and more high pitch. And then there's a vibration in the body yeah. that is actually not a physical vibration. Like if someone was watching you, they wouldn't say you were moving, but you feel a moving and oscillation. And that's actually, that's the auric field. It's magnetic. It works very similar to like a gyroscope. So even if you, this is what also when, when individuals are in deep meditation and they start to thicker, it, what happens is you actually start nodding back and forth by yourself. I mean, without, I mean, excuse me, without any, you're not really trying to rock back and forth. And this is because as the, the spiritual center of the person starts coming online, that it, it's like a circle, it's like a, a, a vortex in a certain tense. It, it makes you go back and forth, back and forth. So that's what you're dealing with. It, it basically is something that okay. can be intensified and it can also be controlled, oh. et cetera. Okay. Well, when, what you said about, uh, when you used, uh, the example of the two, two islands and you start swimming to one, and then you go back to the other because because your fear. Uh, after swimming out more and more, it seems like and just taking it on, it seems like it, it is being able to be controlled. So I just wanted to. I liked how you re I resonated with that example, man. That it's a uh, a lot of a lot of the uh, church and all that stuff. Like you want to sometimes get away, but if that's all you know, you're gonna swim back to the island because sure. you don't know what's on the other side. For sure. So, yeah, and, I like and, it, and that's and that's what, what and, you're doing. and no doubt, man, I, I do appreciate it. And then to end the conversation, you know, that's really what we are is we're these bridges between these spaces now. So that way it's like while the person is heading over to that new new space, it's not like they don't see anybody. So this is the same thing as that when you go into a high state right. of consciousness, you don't want to have like everyone around you, not even like anywhere close to what you're talking about, making you look like a fool, et cetera. But when you have people, and that's really yeah. where the resistance was developed for is because you can go there and then you find people that are having the exact same thing going on. Then you get that synchronicity and then that lets you, that's grounds yeah. you, that gives you more firmness to, okay, Okay, there's someone else going. I know I got like a communication center now to deal with. So, yeah, brother, that it's been awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm gathering. I'm gathering them kind of people. I got some in my corner, and I appreciate them. So, yeah. I appreciate what you said, man. Okay. All right. Thanks for calling. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, Janelle, no, I, I got, got more. Was it? Oh, go ahead. Oh, go go ahead. Yeah, we we got one person that was holding for a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and let them on. Let them ask. How much go ahead. how much go more ahead. time we got in there? I'm, uh... We got about twenty. About uh, 23 minutes left. Okay. Okay. And we'll, we'll go ahead and just check them real quick. So this is uh, area code 781, last four, 7443. You on? Hey, what's up, Southern? I um, just want to definitely express my uh, thanks to you. And uh, I know it's like redundant at this point for you, but uh, definitely uh, see you putting in 360%. So definitely want to express that. Um, I just wanted to um, see if you could clarify on one thing about reincarnation, where um, I've heard you talk about how... Uh, when we die, that the uh, soul um, could go into, like, a family member. But um, I've also heard you talk about, like, how it uh, rushes to its next incarnation. So I'm wondering, like, 
it sounds like it's confusing because it's it's this is all taking place like outside of time. Right. So is this like uh, something that takes place at the same time, or well, uh, these okay. are like two different situations? Okay. So what you're dealing with first is the weights and measures of the soul. Like remember what what is talked about, especially in some of the the Egyptian texts, is about that they were measuring the souls. And if you if the soul didn't have a certain level of measurement, meaning that now it's been now it's become a spirit. Now remember when a soul is divided, it becomes a spirit. It's still non physical, but it doesn't have it's still non physical. It doesn't have a physical body, but it's also not a soul either because somehow it's been divided and put into a canister. And you can actually see this process in alchemy when there's uh, essence extracted from a plant it can stay inside of inside of a glass tube or a jar and so the body was again looked at as a jar that is holding um, the the, uh, the spirit because the spirit and it's keeping the spirit intense from becoming a soul so then if the person is living this life in an existence and then they have now uh, basically what I talked about earlier created small face meaning they have this identity of themselves etc when they come out they're now the body has now shaped the spirit so remember this is like an assembly line it's now the bodies are used to organically shape this spirit into individuality to keep it from the consciousness of what it is as a soul so on the spiritual plane as I said before it, there it's basically looks like tubes and so the beings that are closer to that frequency and on that biorhythm, especially if it's a family member, this spirit has a connection to, just like a line going to them. It's like you remember them and, it's a, and it, get, it can get you to them. So in certain tenses, that individual can be, that's alive can become possessed by the spirit that is a family member, etc. And this has, a, from a light tense, just ideas in the mind if you don't know how to distinguish which ones are yours and which ones aren't, which many people are still working on that ability, then this could be at times an ancestor, especially during certain times that's saying that idea in your mind and when you're telling yourself, you need to get up right now. Why would you tell yourself to get up? Why is it necessary for you to talk to yourself? Why didn't you just get up? So who is really talking? So that's, it was known in the old days that a lot of those voices were ancestral, but it was important for you to, to steal your mind in a certain tense to, to really be able to gauge which one was happening. So you have that one extent, and then you have where, now, and this gets a lot deeper into oaths, bindings, pacts, and rituals, and you know, I'm not sure exactly how much time we have to talk about it, but remember that if a person is in this life, and then they make agreements that they, uh, with other entities that they believe exist, i.e. Eidolons, remember they're in a certain period in time, i.e. everyone's story is during a certain period of time, and then the person uh, basically takes on this culture, and they cultivate themselves into something that is more resonant with that frequency. So thus when they die, then they're under the dominion of that particular entity. And that's why in certain spiritual books it'll tell you, you know, certain entities have 100,000 spirits in their charge. These are 100,000 individual souls, based, still individualized souls, trapped in the same consciousness of this particular entity. So then what goes on from there is that the, um, in a certain sense, the individual is now can go into another incarnation, but under the service of that entity that is still on the astral plane, right? And this tends to play out on a very common level as when the child is born, the parents walk them into the church and basically commit the child to God, which is, you know, the act of the sprinkling and baptism and all these different things. So now the person, the, that's why I was telling these sovereign people, man, you got to think of spiritual sovereignty, not just this paperwork stuff. That was another illusion. Like you got to see where the person has <laughs> signed a spiritual contract because that one existed before the physical contract. So the spiritual contract is when mom says, oh, I, you know, this is my baby God and you take care of him and then blah, blah. And there's that she did that just like in the house, in the hospital, she can sign you over into another custody even so it's still like I said you belong to your mother in because she's still your bi rhythm so it, this is nothing is being done that is not against any kind of laws that's what people need to understand it's just we're being duped because we don't even know that there's laws right so then again what ensues is this person goes into another life and then also has a rider, which means that there is probably something always encouraging them to stay into that particular culture. Like, oh, you know, don't turn your back on Christianity. This maybe person is a porn star. He's sitting there with the cross on still. It doesn't even make any sense, right? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Think about it. It just doesn't. So no matter who, say, who wants to play, they have more bearing. Or, oh, a person can do it. The one Jesus knows and blah, blah, blah. Man, kill it. 
that's a child. A child plays games like that with their mind. You can't say you're about good concepts and then wear symbols about good concepts while you're doing exactly the opposite and then expect that that's supposed to mean that you represent it. You see, so that's, that's it. That's where we have to, you know, kind of check ourselves. But in conclusion, this continues as a conviction. Notice that's the same thing that happens when you're in court and the judge convicts you to a sentence. This means this is a specific period of time in which you must remain under the charge of the, in the, or dominion of this particular magistrate or ma magi or magician. Okay. So what happens is, is that <laughs> then this continues to ensue until you realize that this is all being done against your will, that this couldn't even, this can't even really be done except for that somehow you've been made to believe it. And this has been generally come from your parents because that's who generally teaches the child, the religion or the custom of the dogma, which generally was learned when they were in some kind of slavery, meaning that religions came mm. as a form of making the individual passive so that way the master would be seen as the same uh, congruent with God in whatever religion that was, because God was the king. So all religions started with the king saying that the, he was God. And, became, and that king became the king of kings with that statement. And that's why I was saying there's a lot of biorhythmic issues because that king was still Khan, that Khan is still Cain, that Cain is still Kim, and we know what color Kim was. So there's still like residue hanging behind in these. That's why I was telling people, man, leave the shells. Like get out of this whole I'm this spectrum, I'm that spectrum because you're going to inherit what it takes for that spectrum to stay divided. So I'll just explain it simple. If you're yellow and yellow equals you acting a certain way and being on a certain continent and acting in, 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 with a, or being around a certain group of people and you want to stay in that frequency because you say you're, this is your pride or this is it's pride to represent everything. You see what I mean? But just as animals, pride means the pact. Only who you are binded to, right? So these packs are the same packs and oaths and rituals. It binds you to frequencies that roam about like dogs on the other dimension and tense in groups and in packs all the time trying to prey on something or influence something. This is what you see on the spiritual plane. It's nonstop either because there's no what we call sleep there. And so that's what I was, and so that's a whole nother dynamic. Again, that, that would take a much more deeper show, but I'm hopefully give you a, a kind of idea of what the difference is between when a soul is now in a tense, uh, pa packed it and oaked up to go and take on another physical vehicle so that it can be in the army or the legion. It can re-legion itself, meaning rejoin the army of the Lord or the one who's lowered, meaning down on earth, lowered, L-O-W-E-R-E-D, and then you play basically the warship or worship game where you're battling other planets for dominions or battling other races for dominions in what's called a race. Obviously, in, in any race, there's supposed to be a winner. And then how the, like I said, the, the big laughing going on is that when you pull off the dimension, you'll actually see the black, black and the white on opposite spectrums being used to keep their confusion going on with in the races in between and they just keep bouncing off each other and making this certain sound which I believe sometimes is called the pentantiuk but basically it's like bing 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 and then they knocks it back bing 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 and this is called time time created through sound because sound creates density density is physicality once it slows down it becomes physical and that's why the again the organism is an orchestra and we're all playing our own tone and vibration in it. But then when you're off harmony, then everyone's like, hey, get out of the chorus because, you know, how you're playing is not, you know, on the same tone of vibration. And this is what actually creates this separation again, because that's why we're on this particular part of the plane versus either inside of the earth, which is, of course, the netherworlds or above in the firmaments. Which, and again, remember, the description of these don't vary much. It doesn't mean just because you're on a higher plane that it's better for you. That's why they told you if you're a prisoner here, you're on a prison, you're a prisoner in all subsequent domains. There's the only thing that's different about these, what they call higher and lower are perceptions, not truth. <laughs> it's just how everyone I'm on this. I'm the king, blah, blah. blah and they realize the heavy is the head that wears the crown. I'm sure like most of these beings probably gave up a long time ago with the buffoonery in the wrong direction because once they got to the other end of the spectrum, then they just headed back the other way, got onto that end, and meaning that, the trust me, the black man, if you've watched him down the timeline, he becomes an old white man, and then the old white man is becoming a black man again. 
and then every single thing else in, in between. And that's what I was saying, to be on the air of Baal, to be in the, the, in the state of mind where you're looking down upon this and watching all the steps that are taking place, it gives you a great deal of understanding and also a lot of respect for exactly uh, what is actually taking place because you realize that some or, or many individual, every individual, excuse me, is contributing to this. And so thus we're all building it together. So there's not really one that is over another. And uh, so what's really happened also is that I have, um, you know, I, I thought we'd probably be at somewhere towards the end of the show. And obviously I have, have a daughter and, and there, you know, I told them that I was going to be done at a certain period of time. So I may not, or I'm actually not going to be able to keep continuing the conversation today. But I know there was a plethora of things that were introduced that allow people, especially new things that it's still basically nothing new to the soul because after all, come on. But the reality is, is that this would be sometimes new on the physical plane about what you're hearing. And then it puts all the stuff together for you. And remember, you, even that when you leave that whole body state of consciousness, the body identification, you can go into the spirit identification. That's called the white snake. You need to go into the soul total identification. So remember, black snake, total, total dislocation to God of the earth, basically. Jeb, black earth. Then the white snake, spiritual, try and act like he's good, but he's really a ghost. That's what you're dealing with with the white snake, so understand that. And then that next thing is that balance. So that's you running the gauntlet. That's these life experiences that are giving you the ability to keep progressing through these universes. Once you have the map, though, everything gets a lot more clear from here. So that's really what we want to do with this, this particular segment in our life, this 2014. We give individuals a map, understand, uh, get them to understand how to run the circuits, let, uh, organize the body of information that we've already accumulated, break it down into something very simple, start working on with the children, start building things that are sustainable, and then we keep moving. So that, that, that's really what I'm about. Like that, to me, that, that's enough to do for a lifetime. Um, and, and so that's what's up. And if it doesn't get done this lifetime, I may not leave. I may be the first person to never die. I may be the first person to fly. And sometimes I feel like I'm the first person to bring a certain information. So what is really the limit to that? So I don't think there is any limits. It's about really when we, like when people start hearing this, they're like, man, you can do it too. Like this is not, like I said, my story is actually the story of an individual that was very challenged. It's just I, I kept persevering through the story. It's not, a, it's not a success story in a certain sense of what many people would think, but it's also one of those, you know, slumdog millionaire type stories in a tense because it gets you identified <laughs> with, hey, well, maybe, maybe I'm not appreciating some of the things that I have access to, like a library <laughs> or like a mother <laughs> or like an arm. Yeah. You see what I mean? Like it gets deep. Like when you start thinking about it, you, don't a, you don't got an eyeball, or you don't got a thumb. You know, there's people walking around without this kind of stuff. So I just started like, look, let me mm -hmm. just take what I can, what I have and deal with that. And that's more than enough. Mm -hmm. So that's what's up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man. We appreciate you. Oh man, it's been excellent. Man. I hope to come back on soon when I, you know, when I could gather up, you know, some great information and a great presentation. And also we could do like a simulcast, which is where, you know, I can show the pictures and things that are related to what I'm talking about simultaneously being on the radio with you and also giving your listeners opportunity to look at it on through another website as far as uh, the visuals, because the visuals, it does an entirely different thing. Like eloquent speech is one thing, but having the, the actual visual proof and taking a person through the visual timeline, that's, you know, that's yeah. really going to yeah. give them the materials also necessary to go and talk to other individuals. And so, uh, and, you know, express this to other individuals. So that's what's up. Yeah, it's all life man. Hopefully, hopefully we reach these young people that was listening, man, because we, we try to get the uh, the young population, you know what I'm saying? People oh, that's like... Man, I'm a, I'm a, man, I'm gonna have to do it. I already know what I already know what they want. I'm about to have to do a little different, man. I'm gonna get swagged out on them. Like it's it's gonna be another thing. Like oh, yeah. I tell you, like I'm gonna go. I'm I, but I'm not limited, so it doesn't really like. However, it's gotta exactly. be done. This yeah. is chess. Like the the person who wins the chess is the one who could think the most moves in ahead. And I, I've been doing this for a long time. I was sitting in the cage playing chess with a lot of people that were really smart but weren't given the chance. So I'm just out here representing everything that I can that, that has been hindered, but then has been given the opportunity to excel. And so right now, you know, I feel like I'm at a time in my life, there's beautiful things happening around me, beautiful people. A lot of people have stepped forward, man. Like that's really the other thing that I want to say towards the end of this conversation since we're now, I'm obviously going to have to get off the line, but big, big thanks, man. Even doing the shows, hosting it, all that kind of stuff, man. This is not, like a lot of people think this is regular stuff. Like, oh, I just called and he got on the show. Nah, man, this is not that kind of stuff. Like this is, if, it's like it's, it's being controlled from an extent that 
it was already designed to be put together before the actual physical version. That's what I keep trying to explain to you. This is stuff that's been done in meditations. Like we spend six months of meditation, building the world that we're standing in right now. So, and then all the people that are connected to it, you oftentimes see them at different things in the dream, but when you see them in real life, you recognize exactly what they represent. So if you can't see the supreme in all, then you can't see the supreme at all. And that's just how it is. Like, so now what I'm doing is I'm looking at everything, especially even again, and I'm seeing the difference between the exoteric and the esoteric. And then I'm not limiting myself or cutting off my own energy because of my own misunderstanding or pre-programming of something that's trying to turn me against something that's even me. Like, and that's what I was saying before, all of it's me. So whatever condition it's in, the sorrier it is, the more sorry I am for it. And I'm really in there trying to work with compassion to transmute it. I'm not sitting there like, oh, look, I'm elated. I'm over you. I'm Brispati. I'm sitting on top of the third shock or crown. And basically, you need to do obeisance like ASAP before I just get mad and hit you in the head with the scepter. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, it's it, all of that is, you know, that's created worlds. Like we're going into the unbegotten. Hold on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, well, yeah, yeah. We appreciate you, man. Man, I appreciate y'all yeah, too. Man, we, we, we be we be coming up with all kind of cartoons. We soon gonna get on some of that stuff too, man. And uh, awesome, man. I mean, obviously, there's you know. always room to collaborate in the future, especially with a lot of this open source stuff. This new software and different things come out. You can really put something really nice together. They won't even know it. They won't even know the difference between that and what they're generally watching now, except for it to exactly. be educating them. Exactly. And that's what I like. I mean, we can get actually to production level now, and so that's those who need to see that to authenticate that something is actually there. We can actually deliver it to them. And some people are like, you know, you know, we have a certain approach at this. Sometimes we're even heavy on the aesthetics like we sit and I may spend a couple hours designing a flyer if I know that flyer is going to go to a million people it's just kind of common sense like there's certain things that you just can't build the city before the road like it's <laughs> and that's how I'm, I'm, I'm coming at this also I'm being very balanced not you know and I'm gonna stay love and light let's just all do what we want then there's no order no regimen no nothing everyone just haywire posting stuff posting symbols and we're all confused nah and then it's not also going to be hey you know this is basically paper Paper click like you click on this link and you know uh, uh you get to me paid on another level that you don't even know about you know and that's that's the spectrum that you have going on in most of these stations but i mean obviously y'all brothers has kept it real there's definitely uh as as my my friend dave says a massive salute to that and then on top of that we have this opportunity in the future to keep collaborating because obviously you'll be following information following the network i put you onto the twitter and things like that so i'll definitely be taking a look to what you guys are doing and then and then i'm going to make another circuit here with y'all soon as far as with information and things like that so we have a date we have a date and a destiny okay. with uh, another level of the massive information so yeah and then yeah. As you said, with the children thing that's something that we're going to be opening up here in just a moment and we're going to need as many people as possible really to to put their heads together but we got some heavy hitters in the house and we're gonna do a lot of brainstorming first mm -hmm. and see exactly how we should approach this you know we can go into the uh maybe some ipad applications definitely some 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 uh youtube oh, videos yeah, oh, yeah. and then a little bit of animation yeah. maybe a little puppet booth you know all these kind of things because people have to realize you can't just go throw your you can't go throw your baby to uh cornelius to grip a volume six and then <laughs> get all oh, mad because you know they don't really they don't speak that language and nor do we want to teach them that uh -huh. language and there's some things that I've seen man I don't need people to go through that in order to understand I'm telling the truth I look for another way if you know what I'm talking about like uh, yeah, there's certain things that you don't you don't really gather the information on yeah. unless you've actually gone through that experience as I say experience is a real teacher but I'm here alive but not not completely unscathed like repairing myself because of the desensitization of what some of this spiritual knowledge will actually do to you and um, and so now we're here, we're rectifying that. I'm always willing, like I said, to to look at what I'm doing and to change up things, especially if I know that it's going to be beneficial to to myself because I'm also everyone else. And so that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Like mm. if I fix myself, then I'm going to fix everyone else because everyone is really me. When I get mm. up here and I have to talk to people, I'm really taking the responsibility of what they, what I say. That's why I don't recommend no mantras, no deity names, that kind of thing, because you, those send ripple effects way beyond the limit. Meaning that you'll be here sitting on yeah. planet Earth for about four parsecs, <clears throat> playing around with the raw mantra and recommending that to people for them to call it. You'll have to go and extract all them folks. So you better get, become a really good extractor. But like I was saying before, there's other positions opening up. Some people's job is to go into these spiritual planes and shine their light. Then it becomes a beacon. It's like something that the beings that are there haven't seen in a long time. And then they start modeling themselves after that light in order to, to bridge themselves into their next state of consciousness. No one gets left behind. 
And as they tell you, that's really one of the models and one of them strong organizations. Hey, man, Nobody gets left behind, your... baby. I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna get her. <laughs> I'm gonna get her. She's here. <laughs> yeah, you know that's the only one. That's the only one that can issue those whoopings too, because you'll be looking like, I'm sorry, <laughs> but yeah. And plus, you know, I'm, my voice is also like, okay, because I've been building like for the last three or four days. Like we're building massive. So that's what's up. Wholeness to everyone. I'm here. I'm alive. I'm kicking. Resistance is strong. After quest. If you want to actually get to us, we're on resistance2010.com. If you want to see the archives of the really the most recent videos, because you don't have to necessarily deal with YouTube all the time unless you want to catch the radio shows, you can go to astroquest.tv and then you could just keep going. And there's pictures and all sorts of stuff from, from at least two years ago all the way back. So that's, that's where you can get a lot of the, the grade A previous conversations. It's cool. All right. Peace and love, man. Thank you, thank you. thank you for the information. No doubt. It's, it's my pleasure. So I'll talk yeah. to y'all, y'all brothers we'll soon. Be in contact. No doubt. All right. All right. All right now.